I hope you people have enjoyed these lovely flowers from our gardens here in Delray, Texas. You know, I've told you that uh, I have called our home here in Del Rio a little bit of heaven. And I know a few patients could be here, as I am this morning, among these lovely flowers, you would agree with me. The flowers you have seen were cut for breakfast this morning and put here in the room to be put in this picture for your enjoyment. And when you see flowers and hear the song of birds and see the sparkle of a dewdrop in the sunshine, think of the great power in the universe and the giver of all good gifts that makes these lovely things possible for we mortals here below. Now, uh, there's just something that I wanted to call to you, you patients' attention, which I'm sure that you've noticed. We do not have room to properly take care of visitors and relatives and friends of our patients. When we are busy, we do not have room for even all of the patients that we would like to care for. And I'm asking each one of you good friends of mine, all of you patients who are here, that uh, you will not ask us to room and board your relatives or your friends, realizing that it places us to a great disadvantage and uh, much inconvenience. You know there's not any hospital in the world that uh, permits relatives and friends to stay with patients. When the patient is sick, he should be left alone with the doctors and the nurses because the relatives somehow or else seem at times without intending to do so to get into the way of things. And we can do a better job for patients, get better results, if uh, they will have their loved ones and their friends stay outside the hospital. I know you realize we're busy, have much work to do, trying to do a good job on the broken down pieces of humanity that comes to see us. We have the, our cases I might say, are the most advanced. You people have stayed away from me, many of you until you are physical wrecks. You can never be made whole. The best we'll be able to do for many of you will be to patch you up and give you less freedom from pain and suffering than you've had heretofore. If I could get you people to obey my instructions as I give them to you over the radio, come in time, come before great structural changes have taken place in your body, before valuable and vital organs have broken down, we could accomplish so much more for you and do so much more for you. And as I bring this talk to a close, won't you please do what we tell you to do? Don't have the job half done. If our dentist tells you that your bridges should be changed or you should have a set of teeth or you need teeth filled or if you need teeth extracted or if you have infection in your teeth, have that done. If you have infected tonsils, have them taken care of. If you have infected piles or infected rectal condition, have that treated. If your kidneys are diseased, when you go back home, take medicine and follow the diet. And I wish you people would remember this, that there's no sense in going back home and following the diet for four or five weeks and writing me and saying that you followed the diet for a few weeks and you're not yet well. People don't get well that way. You can't expect to get well in three or four weeks if something you've had the matter with you for months or years. And uh, many chronic diseases are hard and difficult to get out of your body. The people that are coming to us these days are much sicker than the people that came to us in days gone by. The work that we were doing 10 and 15 years ago was much easier to do than the work we're doing today because people are now coming to see us in the last stages of their disease. 
many of you women and men should have been treated 10 and 15 years ago. And uh, that time that has elapsed, while you may have been taking some kind of treatment, it wasn't doing you any good. You've been wasting your time and you've been wasting your money. Your diagnosis has not been correct. You've been trying to get by with prescriptions and one dollar prescriptions and two dollar prescriptions and things that your neighbors and friends have recommended to you to take, but you've been wasting your money and you've been wasting your time. And the sad part of it is, my friends, you've been wasting your health. And as many of you that's looking at me right now in this picture, and many of you that will be looking at me in pictures to come, that have wasted your time and your substance, and have lost the function of valuable organs like your heart and your kidneys, the glands of your body, and part of those have been destroyed by the infection that you've allowed to stay in there for months and years. You never will be the same again. You need not expect to. But if you will take our advice and take our treatments, take our medicine, follow our diets, you'll have better health <coughs> and feel better and have more freedom from misery and pain than you've had heretofore. I'd want you to think that everybody that comes to see us can get well. Far from it. We're not miracle workers. We've got to have something left in your body to work on when you come to see us. Many of you come to us when all the working parts of your body are broken down and destroyed. If you'd come to us in time, as I tell you, you could go forth radiantly happy and radiantly healthy and feel as beautiful as these flowers uh, look beautiful to us as we see them in this colored picture. Contemplate these things and see how much time you've wasted valuable time that can never be given back to you again. See the happiness and the health you've missed by your procrastination and your delay. When you get back home, why don't you tell your neighbors and your friends to not wait like you've waited, to not delay coming to see us like you have, but to come before they get into the condition that you're now in. You remember the sayings I've said to you over the radio about the young man traveling along the road and coming aside the elderly man who said to him, Remember, man, as you pass by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so you must be. So prepare to follow me. Tell your friends to not follow in your footsteps by neglect and delay, but to take time by the forelock and act now while it's yet something to be done for you. I say these things to you as your best friend. I'm saying them to you to help you and to help those that you'll come in contact with when you go back home. I do not have anything to gain by talking to you this way any more than the satisfaction of knowing that I've told you the truth and advised you for the best. If I would make flamboyant claims or make claims over the radio that sounded great and big, I might mislead you. I would not mislead you in anything for anything in the world because I am Dr. Brinkley speaking to you and I am the friend of humanity and especially your friend. Goodbye.